say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. Hey. We're the farmers. That's right. And this is our kitchen. That is. You know, somebody asked us the other day, are you really, is your name really farmer? Mm -hmm. They were from out of state, and I said, yes, it, it really is. And this is our kitchen. This, this is, is our kitchen. State, and we are cooking dinner. And I am starving. And you, you have, are starving. Yeah, we haven't eaten yet. So we're going to do surf and turf tonight. Let me tell you, we've been running here lately. We have. You're making me travel. I am making you travel. And fish. And fish. It's awful. I'm telling you what, she's a sweetie. Not only is she pretty, but she's a sweetie. Uh, well, see, I get to read and float around. I'm enjoying myself, too. Recently, we've been doing the kayak thing, we and I've got a disease. You do. It's called the trout bug, and we've been fly fishing a lot. Now, we went to Montana. Beautiful, beautiful Montana. Beautiful. And they call it Big Sky Country. Why do they call it? Why? Big Sky Country. Look at this sky. I was walking back from the Madison River fishing. had a great day fishing. I was looking at my fly thinking, okay, will I be able to use this tomorrow? And the ground was suddenly blood red. I thought, whoops, I'm going to hear a trumpet in a minute. <laughs> And up. I looked up, and this sky, the sun was setting in the west. It was Beautiful. shining on a thunderhead in the east. Yeah. And I ran in and grabbed the phone and clicked that. Nice picture. Beautiful. We stayed on the Madison River in a little cabin in the middle of nowhere. It was fun. We had a horse and a donkey mm -hmm. that were our friends. We fed them. We did. That was fun. And we just had a beautiful, wonderful time. We fished. We went to Yellowstone. Yes. We saw some geysers. We saw and we wildlife. saw buffalo. Right, walked right by the car. Buffalo, elk, that's, that's bear. Beautiful. We saw so many wonderful things. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. We we are blessed to live in such a beautiful country. And you fished there. You fished at Yellowstone. Fished at Yellowstone. Caught some brown trout. Caught yes. a cutthroat. You did. Um, caught a couple rainbows. It's a beautiful place. Caught a bunch in the Madison. Then we came back <laughs> and went to the Cumberland Tailwaters here in Kentucky. We did. Caught several in the last couple of days and some really nice ones. We also went to the South Holston River. You had fun there too. On the Virginia Tennessee border. Yes. There were some trout in there, Nikki. I want to show you something. Okay. Hold that up there, if you will. Look at this. This is why I've got the disease because there are <laughs> fish. This was a Kentucky fish that That's I caught. It's a nice fish. Look at that fish. That's it's beautiful. a brown trout. I caught this fish not too long ago. I had it mounted because it didn't survive the catching. It got hook in his gill. It's awful pretty too. Beautiful brown yeah. trout and we'll have Raquel in a little while to tell us the different trout okay. that are stocked in Kentucky. When you get a hold of one of these on a fly rod, let me tell you what, and I was catching 24 inches in southeastern Montana. Then I got hooked. Then again we went to Kentucky and Tennessee, but tonight we're going to fix that. To me there's nothing like going out and gathering your own food. Whether right. it's mushrooms like we mm -hmm. had on the last show, whether it's deer hunting and it's bow season. Get ready. Look right out the window and see deer around here. You're ready. This is a bonus. We're cleaning out the freezer because we we're going to put more venison in there. That's right. And we found a tenderloin, one side of a tenderloin. Isn't that oh, beautiful? Yes, wonderful? it is nice. So tonight we're doing surf and turf. If you don't have venison, you can use beef. If you don't have trout, you can order those online a lot mm -hmm. of places. Look at your local butcher shop, meat yeah. places. You might be able to find some trout that are frozen or fresh. Or take a trip. Take, take a, a trip. trip. Buy your fishing That's license right. and go fishing. All right, Mrs. Farmer, I'll tell you where we're going to start. Okay. Let's start with cutting some thin slices of lemon. You got to have lemon. You got to have lemon with your fish. Normally, I'll let most of my trout go, but I do like them if they're fixed properly. I love to smoke them. Now, not too long ago, we did a smoked trout recipe. If you want to look that up, that's my favorite way to have trout. Now, my old buddy Randall Gibson used to take these and he would cut down the center and he would put potatoes, carrots, small potatoes, cubed carrots, celery, onion, Yum. and he would bake that in aluminum foil. Then he would season it with butter and different things. And that was really good too. Tonight, this isn't too far removed from your poached salmon that you like so I love well. poached salmon. I know you do. It's going to be close to that. Okay. All right. Now if you'll open him up. 
Something I'm going to do, Mrs. Farmer, I'm going to take a little bit of mayonnaise. Now the great thing about trout fishing is they're, they're probably the, one of the easiest fish to clean. That was easy. Really them. easy. You basically just open them up the vent, cut them up front, pull out their entrails, and you're good to go. I'm going to take a little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of pepper. Yummy. And a little bit of paprika. And we put that mayonnaise in there. And now let's put Some two or three slices of lemon in there, just as many as, as will fit. I'm and like I'm that. I'm gonna take a sprig of dill okay. and lay that in there and I'll lay on the side. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my brush. I'm gonna take some mayonnaise. I'm just gonna coat that fish. Now somebody might say, oh my gosh, it's looking at me. <laughs> but he can't see. That's right. He's asleep. That's right. So I'm gonna take some mayonnaise. Now what that does is it really has a nice buttery taste. Now that will kind of melt down. Good. It does have and a buttery the, taste. Oh yeah, yeah, the flavor that's in there. And it, it, it's, it's an adhesive as well, and all the spices will stick to it. So we're going to take that mayonnaise, put on there. And we're going to come back with our salt, some pepper, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion powder, and a little paprika. bit of paprika. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the full slices of lemon. If you lay some full slices, just lay it right on top of it. All right. You know what? Got in the mail the other day. I've been thinking about buying one of these forever. Tina and Jean King. I've wanted that's to nice. get one of these. For, look at this. That's for nice. One arm, dude. Oh, that's perfect. Let me do some deal first. Oh, Mrs. Farmer. Just three? How about four? I got four. Yeah, pieces. four. Or... So this is going to kind of be like your poached salmon. I'm going to take okay. some white wine and put it on the bottom of your roast pan mm -hmm. so it'll Ooh, steam nice. all up in there. Nice. And we let him get room temperature because mm -hmm. we don't want a cold, cold fish. We want him to get done on the inside. 425 for probably about a half an hour. Okay. And we'll check the temperature when it's nice and flaky. We'll bring Yummy. that out. I'm gonna make you a little bit of aioli type sauce here and then we're gonna be good to go. That sounds good. So we're gonna take some white wine, put it in the bottom of our pan here, because it is a high temperature. Yes. Half hour of that one all cook off. So lay him in there. Very carefully bring him up. Set him in there. Now look at that. It's perfect. Isn't that nice? Yes. Is that not beautiful? That is itself? actually beautiful. All right, let's pop that in. Ready? Number 425. Put it on the bottom rack so we can see. Ready? And when you see those lemons start to turn brown. We know. And you know that it's nice and flaky, it's time to roll. Now, tell you what let's do. Let's get our meat ready. There's something about bringing in your own game yes, to the table. Mm -hmm. I can't explain it. I've been doing it since I was a kid. Got a little boost 30 some years ago when I met Raul mm -hmm. and he started showing me sauces oh, yeah. and tricks, the French chef, the amazing, those French chefs, and he was just an amazing, amazing guy. But he showed me sauces and what to do with trout and venison and so on and so forth. He was really an inspiration and really helped me out in my cooking. You're good with your sauces. Well, thanks to him. Everybody learns from somebody and mm -hmm. he was the master. So what we're gonna do with this, I don't wanna disguise the flavor. Now we're gonna make a sauce, mm -hmm. a mushroom sauce. Yummy. We're gonna reduce down but I want this to just have salt and pepper. That's it. Perfect. We're gonna grill that. We want it to have a pink center. We don't wanna get it overdone. And then we're gonna drizzle our reduction down over that. Yummy. All right, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna cut off some wonderful grill-sized medallions. Look at that. Wow. Is that not beautiful? It is beautiful. And we're just gonna salt and pepper these. That's it. I'm not okay. even gonna put any garlic on these. Just salt and pepper. That's good looking meat. Isn't it too? Yeah. Really good looking meat. Now I went to look for mushrooms today. You did. And I didn't find anything that you could eat. Yeah. It's been a really mushroomy year. It has, hasn't it? Gotta be careful. You have to know what you're doing before you put them in your mouth. Look at that beautiful That's, venison. That is good meat. You know, when you have a chest freezer, <laughs> it's hard to find anything. Right. Because you, you get in there and you dig around and stuff falls down in there. But you do find some wonderful surprises yeah, like that. Yeah, it was So that's what we're gonna do right there. That's about Yummy. it. I'll tell you what, let's clean this up. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with a cleaner cooking area. And we need some pots and pans. We can't yes, we do. This. Yes, right. we do. All right, you're mixing up some rice there. And I'm just digging this. Look at this. Look at this. You Ooh, like that, don't you? Not. Just boom, 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 boom. <laughs> This is really handy. That is nice. You know, for years I've thought about getting one of these, but that little indentation too really helps me out because it keeps everything in here. So thanks to Tina and Jean for that. Wow. That's Look nice. at that. 
Now what Perfect. am I what am I chopping this up for? What are you chopping it up is for? I'm gonna make you your favorite little kind of aioli Ooh, here. I love that. I'm just gonna take a little mayonnaise, some fresh dill. Take just a little bit of lemon juice. I see everything's kind of coming oh. together here. Yes it is. And that's your goal. It's kind of like putting a puzzle together. You gotta try to think ahead when everything's gonna be ready, how long it takes. So we've got our lemon, our fresh dill. We're gonna put just a little bit of stone ground mustard in here, Mr. Farmer. All right, I like that. And I'm telling you what, just the simplest little things like this sometimes. Now I gotta get my butter ready to go. If you'll cut me up some onions, some shallot. Alrighty. I'm gonna cut my mushrooms here. We got two people cutting. Mm -hmm. Man, that works well. I might have to steal that from you. How about that? Go ahead and dump that in there. Half of a shallot and a quarter of an onion. Good? There we go. Well, our rice so is good. So we got our rice going over here. I'll try it. Looks like good. Mm. Now once these onions start to get translucent, I'm gonna throw the mushrooms in there. I've had so many fishing adventures in my life. Yes. Yeah. I was host to Kentucky Field my whole life. And some of those adventures were with my old buddy Rick Hill. Mm -hmm. Now Rick is the artist for the Department of Fish and Wildlife and he actually does a lot of stuff on the side as well. Let's bring him in while this stuff's cooking up to talk about trout in Kentucky. He's got some stuff I bet you don't know. We have Rick Hill back. Now we love nature. When we're out fishing, we look around us. You know, we brought mm -hmm. mushrooms in. Oh yeah. We like to bring as much food in as we can, but right. while we're out and about, we really like to observe mm -hmm. and we like to know which birds making that particular call. Oh, sure. It really kind of yeah. wakes you up to your environment. Yeah. And Rick is an outdoor artist, wildlife artist. He's been doing this all his life. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing artist, award-winning artist. Still works for the Department of Fish and Wildlife, but yes. he does, you do work yourself sure. as well. Mm -hmm. Now, not too long ago we were fishing in Alabama and I was catching right. a lot of spotted bass. Right. So I wanted folks to know the difference between a spotted, right. a large mouth, and a small mouth. Right. Mm -hmm. We've been fishing a lot for trout. Nikki has really been nice to me. Right. She's gone to Montana, Tennessee, and all over the place fishing with me. We have quite the fishery here in Kentucky. Yeah. Now most of these fish we don't eat, but if occasionally one gets hung up and right. it mm -hmm. dies, well, they're excellent well, eating. Right. we're gonna eat them. Mm -hmm. We're gonna eat some tonight. Right. But if you will, Rick, tell us the difference between okay. These two fish, obviously this is a rainbow and this right. is a brown, but, but tell us all about these right. fish. Well, just a little bit about trout in general. It's the basic fins of the dorsal and the tail, but there's also the adipose fin. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't like in a catfish, but right. the trout have adipose fins too. Now the rainbow trout is origin is the west coast, but they've been stocked in Kentucky for generations. There are no indigenous trout to Kentucky, correct? No. It was thought at one time that the brook trout, well, we'll show that in a minute, was indigenous to Kentucky. But the thought today is that it was more to the east in West Virginia, Virginia and the Appalachians and running up north. And so not quite in Kentucky, but really close. Now we have but, great fishers in Kentucky, but they need cold water, correct? Yes. I'm pretty sure the trout like something in the 65 degree area. If it gets right. much warmer, it can't stay very warm much longer, like 70 for very long. Right. Uh, so it could become stressed. Um, now, like I said, from the West Coast comes the rainbow. I've been here and in many places, like, but the Cumberland River is where they get the biggest. Yes. The tailwaters of Lake Cumberland. Yes. Well, anyway, to tell that in the brown, its origin is Europe. And it's been here since the late 1800s. One way to tell the difference is, is obviously the rainbow is famous for its Color. rainbow colors. A little bit of bluish and of course the crimson or red stripe down the side. And lots of black spots, lots of dark spots on the tail and the dorsal as well. On the brown, you have the larger spots, including some red with halos around it, but very little marking on the tail. Mm -hmm. Now when you catch young trout, as you know, with all the trout you catch, the young trout are often more silvery right. and they're a little bit harder to tell when they don't have their colors like spawning colors mm -hmm. and when they're young. And sometimes even par marks if they're young. Remember that there's very little spotting in the brown trout in the tail. So if you catch a silvery one and you're trying to tell until you really get to looking at the spots, that's one way 
that you can tell. And they kind of get a kipe in much better color at spawning time. In the spring for the rainbow, and for the brown, it's in the fall, like September to December. Usually in Kentucky, when they really are the best, seems like to me, from my experiences, right, right around October. Now let's talk about that brook. All right. Now here's the brookie. The beautiful brookie. Now this one, I've got this painted as a breeding male mm -hmm. with beautiful colors. And of course, when they're young, they could be a little more light colored and silvery. But actually, the neat thing about a brook trout, other than their habitat, is they're actually not a true trout. They're in the char family, like a dolly varden or everyone has seen probably a lake trout up north. And one way you can tell, instead of a brown body is in the brown trout with dark spots on the body, they have a dark body with light spots on a dark body. Yes. That's one way to tell. So I have caught these within the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. down right. below in the, the tailwaters tail of, of Cumberland. Mm -hmm. And um, they started stocking these what? Several years ago. Several years ago. I'm not sure the exact year, but they've been putting them in for several. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh, I think it's my favorite as far as coloration goes. Well, thank you again, Rick, for coming out and talking to the folks and telling us about our trout skis. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. And I've enjoyed fishing for them. Thank you, oh, Nikki, yeah. for letting me go fishing a whole lot here. I'm recently. telling you, you're a lucky man. She puts up with me, and yeah. she even videos while we're out. She takes her camera. And a trooper. I'm telling you. Putting up with you fishing. I, Putting I've, been, up with I've me. been there. Putting up with me, period. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's thank it. you, Rick. Yeah. <laughs>
Once it's bubbly, I'm going to add a quarter cup of milk, and that I'm going to make sure, I'm going to let that go for a while a too. A quarter cup of what? Milk. Milk? Milk. How do you spell milk? <laughs> M-E-L-K. And then I'm going to let that get really thick. Once it's thick, I'm going to take it off the stove and set it aside, and we're going to add a half a cup of mayonnaise to that and two teaspoons of cider vinegar. Yum. Yummy. there in that grill. Okay, we're coming together, Miss Farmer, really quickly. I'm excited. I'm going to come back now with sour cream. Okay. That would be a dollop. A dollop, dollop and a half. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of horseradish. Mm -hmm. I like horseradish. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be about a teaspoon. Mix it all okay. up. I'll tell you what, here's what's going to happen. We've got our horseradish and our sour cream here. Oh, wow. In a minute, we're going to dress our plate up. Come back out for the big reveal. We'll be right back. Some of the best fish I ever had was in a Korean restaurant in Hawaii, and they served a whole fish like this. And he was smiling at me, and I thought, how is this gonna be? And it was the best fish I ever had. And then we had another one in a Chinese restaurant somewhere yes. where the fish was just fried. It was a carp. It was good too. And it was delicious. Was good. So, I don't know, it's too beautiful to eat. It is, that's a nice, that's a pretty dish. That's a pretty dish. Your homemade hollandaise sauce, I'll try that, it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you. So, where do we start? I don't Let's know. Try, try a piece of the steak. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Now, sauce. let me show you a little secret here. But you can, when it's done and it's done properly, it'll lift right oh, off wow. of that bone. Yeah. See there? The backbone's right Ooh. in. But what I'm going to do, Ms. Farmer, is I'm just going to take this hide off right okay. here. And I want you to dig in there. I'm just going to pull the skin back. Wow. And I want you to grab a piece of meat off and dip in your little aioli sauce uh, there. You know I love trout. Go ahead and get you a piece there. Ooh. Look. Look, Ooh. How, look how beautiful. Hmm. Wow. Wow. You like your trout, don't you? I love trout. That's so oh. good. Oh, wow. That's the best oh. I've ever had. I like oh. that. Mm. Mm. Now, in a minute, we're going to get really crazy on this fish. Oh, that's down good. Here. What we'll do is we'll lift this off. You can actually take that backbone when they're good and done like this and lift it out. Okay. Pretty much Makes it easier to eat. But I want to try a piece of this meat. And I want to try some of the asparagus. I do, too. I'm just going to pick it up with my finger. Is that okay? Mm. Mm -hmm. You like it? Finger food. Sauce. Oh, my. Mm. Not sure mm. which is the best. It's all delicious. You know what I like about this is the mayonnaise. And instead of people use egg, but this was with mayonnaise, it's really got a good flavor, don't you, you think? You know what? That uh. is, all of this is so easy to make. Mm -hmm. So delicious. We're going to tear this up. But this, with that little bit of jelly in oh, it, so got good. a little bit of heat in it, we taste the flavors that we like in a reduction. The mushroom mm -hmm. has a nice earthy flavor. It mixes with that red wine and the bouillon. You have that familiar flavor of that yeah. sauce that, that he made and, and herb jelly in there adding a little heat. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so Sweet. nice. We love going out into the field and bringing our food home. Now, we don't do that very often. You can do this with beef. You can buy your trout or you can use any other kind of fish that you want to do like this. This was all you, though. But this was, this was all in the woods or on the water. Right. Perfect. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, when you bring it home yourself, there's just something special about it. How do you get on our Facebook page, Ms. Farmer? Is it difficult? It's very difficult. You hit like. Hit, hit like. like. We want you to be our Facebook friend and go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. All these recipes, all these things that we've done, all these how-tos are out right. there for you to look at. And hit that little red button, subscribe, and I guarantee you, every time we get something new, you'll know about it. That's right. So how do you look at our videos? You go to? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Click on YouTube. Boom. There That's we are. Right. Ms. Farmer, it's time to shut the cameras down and us become animals. That's right. I can't you know, wait. when the camera's off, we don't even use forks. We just blah. That's right. <laughs> this is a beautiful, wonderful meal. Yes, it Came is. Came in from the woods, off the water, and the only thing you need is a hunting and fishing license. That's right. Ms. Farmer, it's all about good times, good friends, really good eats. I'm we'll ready. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. This is so good. Oh, mm. yeah.
We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Emerson Farms Country Store. Something for every member of the family. Ephraim McDowell Medical Center in Danville, Kentucky. Gulf Coast Connection. Seafood straight from the Gulf to you. The Spine Center of Central Kentucky. Wilderness Road Hospitality, Stanford, Kentucky. Visit Frankfurt, Kentucky's spirited capital city.